Chapter 8 Out of Control Sergeant Spears looked down at her watch, then to the folders she had placed neatly atop a large table in the conference's room. She had always found something soothing about organization and symmetry. One thing that bothered her most was running late, even in some instances arriving an hour early for an event of great importance. Glancing at her watch once again, it read 456. She found it frustrating that none of her team seemed to feel the same as she did about punctuality. She knew that couldn't be the case since they were all military, but something really important must be keeping them. Damn it. I can't leave the room to find out. Knock. Knock. The pounding at the door caught her off guard. Why the hell are they knocking? She muttered quietly enough not to be heard by whichever teammate was on the other side of the door. Enter, she called out from the far side of the room. What is going on? she again said. Then, with a commanding voice, she demanded, Enter! This time, when nobody entered, she felt a great sense of urgency. Her first thought was of her sidearm, which, to her dismay, was located in her room, still hidden in her luggage. Disgusted at the thought, she quickly looked around for something to use as a weapon. It didn't take long since, other than a large table, copier, and steel-framed chairs surrounding it were items she had brought, which only added up to papers and a laptop. Picking up the laptop, Spears made her way around the table to the door. As she neared, thoughts of this being a test occurred to her. Well, I'm not leaving the room if that's what you're trying to get me to do. Just as her left hand gripped the door handle, she heard what sounded like many doors opening at once, then had the thought, maybe they're on the way, and where is the German? Spotting four doors on the left side of the hall open up with near-perfect synchronization set off alarms in Otto's mind that caused his instincts and training to take over. Already on the left side of the hall, he ran diagonally to the right side toward a room door still closed. Taking short, fast steps, Otto built up speed in just a short distance. With some quick calculations and previous experience, Otto knew he couldn't generate enough force to break through that door, but its recess frame would provide a great launching point for one on the other side of the narrow hall. Aiding in smooth transfer of momentum, Otto leapt up slightly before planting his right foot into the door frame. With his foot making good contact and energy from the short run transferred, Otto kicked off toward the door directly across the hall with not a millisecond to spare as all four Alpha Squad members fired. Drex couldn't believe what he was watching on his laptop. Nothing in his training had ever prepared him for this. Even with his body and mind wanting to jump into action, he had no clue what to do. His own team was firing on a person that was supposed to join them. Guess they really didn't want a new member, he grumbled right before Otto came crashing through his door, stopping just inside the room. In a flash, Drex rose to his feet with his pistol pointing at Otto while keeping one eye on the hallway security camera. Cutting it a little close, aren't you? The meeting starts at five. Placing a hand over his stomach where bullets singed four red lines, Otto looked at Drex, perplexed. They will be coming, Otto said, pushing himself along the floor deeper into Drex's room and ignoring the pistol Drex had pointed at him. Shit, Spears, Drex exclaimed seeing Spears open the conference room door at the far end of the hall. Without hesitation, Drex ran for the door Otto had crashed through. He wasn't sure what needed to be done just eight seconds ago, but seeing the four turning their pistols toward another team member had made everything clear. Drex heard all four pistols fire at Spears as he stepped just outside his room. Still not wanting to kill another team member, Drex fired at Higgins, striking him in the lower leg. To Drex's surprise, the well-built man didn't so much as flinch, even as blood ran from the hole. Unsure whether to fire again, one thing he did know was that the shot managed to get the attention of all four. He was almost hypnotized by the synchronized precision in which they moved, at the same time creeped out as all four heads turned slowly toward him, with eyes almost void of any color except white and black. I'm guessing it isn't going to do me any good to order you to stand down, right? Drex asked, as the four together turned their bodies in his direction. You son of a bitch! Drex heard at the other end of the hall, right before seeing Spears smash a laptop into the nearest team member's head, 
followed by a knee to his forehead while falling. Spears' actions brought attention from the remaining three. Before the nearest one could fully turn, her laptop was already picking up speed before bearing its edge deep within their throat. Spears almost froze at the sight of the crushed throat that did little more than cause one of his eyes to slightly twitch. She quickly leapt into the air, bringing her right leg up and kicking out with the toe of her boot to this Alpha Squad member's temple. With eyes rolled back into his skull, he fell to the floor with no further movements. Glad I put her on the team, Drex thought as he watched his second team member fall. Taking his lead from Spears and discovering that they could be knocked out, Drex moved toward Higgins as he and the remaining team member raised their pistols toward Spears. Drex began moving in Higgins' direction, only to be surprised when both fired placing two rounds into heads of the men Spears had knocked out. No! Drex screamed, striking Higgins just below his right ear and causing him to tumble to the floor. Drex watched the large man fall. Then a bullet passed through Higgins' head, fired by the remaining team member. Quickly, she placed the pistol to her forehead and without hesitation squeezed the trigger, sending a bullet through her own head and spraying brain matter all over a wall. What the hell is going on? Spears screamed, unable to process the gruesome sight that lay all around her as blood still pumped out over gray matter on the floor. Knowing that if Spears wasn't redirected, she would go into shock. Drex rushed over and grabbed her by both upper portions of her arms, making him the main thing she could see. Look at me! Look at me! I am giving you a direct order! Drex shook her furiously and repeated himself. Look at me! Seeing he had her attention, he continued, Spears, I want you to go in there and destroy everything. Leave nothing. Be ready to leave in five mics, got it? Drex didn't let go till he was sure she was focused, and then almost turned her back toward the room himself before letting go. Otto, you still alive in there? Drex called out as he began picking up weapons and identifications from his deceased team. Ya, ja, mein Herr, Otto said, stepping out into the hall with the front of his white shirt covered in blood. Seeing the blood, Drex then asked, You going to stay that way? Ya, ja, it is only a flesh wound. Four to be exact, one deeper than the next. I will live. We need to move. Otto picked up one of the SIG P320s lying on the floor. Knowing they couldn't move for a few minutes, Drex ran past Otto to the stairway door and began using the butt of a pistol to hammer coins all around the door seam. What are you doing? Otto asked, unable to figure out just what Drex was hoping to accomplish. Finishing with the last bit of change he had in his pocket and that he had recovered from Higgins's pockets, Drex turned to Otto. What? You never played pranks on your parents growing up by wedging the door closed with pennies? Nine. As a young man, I studied and read many books, Otto proudly informed Drex. Now, standing in front of Otto, Drex could see something had to be done about the bleeding. Your loss. Go wrap your wound quickly. We'll be moving out in three minutes. Oh, and grab a fresh shirt from my bag. We'll be traveling light. Drex could hear Spears shredding papers in the conference room, and then he heard very loud banging noises. Stepping through the door, he watched as Spears raised a chair high above her head and then swinging it down on a copier. What you doing there, Spears? Drex asked. With the copier sufficiently crushed, Spears set the chair back down and slid it casually back under the table. Sorry, sir, some of these machines store what they copy, just wanted to be sure this one didn't. Watching Spears take two bottles of water and dump them into the shredder, he figured she must be close to finished. We're traveling light, one small bag. My room in two mics, Roger. Dropping the bottles, Spears replied, Roger, as she quickly walked around the long table, heading to her room. Bang, bang, bang. Open this door! The three of them could hear banging at the stairway door as Drex opened a window to his room. Taking one last look to the security camera he had placed, Drex could see police rushing into the building through its front door. The camera to the rear of the building showed everything was still clear. Okay, follow me, Drex ordered, closing his laptop and throwing it into his backpack before swiftly climbing through the window, carefully stepping on clay shingles just outside his room window. Every foot and hand placement was done with great care, not out of fear of damaging the roof, but from fear of having very old clay shingles break 
sending them falling down to the street below. It only took a minute to climb over the roof to the rear, where Drex quickly spotted what he was looking for, the gutter drain. When they had first arrived, he had noticed they were made of cast iron pipe. If the years had not loosened the fasteners from the wall, it would be easy to climb down to ground level. Drex turned, letting his feet move over the edge. He next slid his body over and allowed his feet to grab hold of the pipe. Then, with one smooth motion, he slid down below the gutter and made his way down the cast iron pipe. Once down, Drex scanned the area while keeping a close eye on the rear exit. He knew it was just a matter of time before the police would break through the door and begin a broader search. Do you have a car? Drex asked Otto as the other man made contact with the ground seconds after him, spears close behind. Drex knew that there was no way to make it out of the hotel parking lot in their own vehicle without being stopped by police, but one thing he was sure of was that a German commando special forces didn't use the parking lot. Two streets over, Otto said while pointing in a direction away from the hotel. Drex gestured with a slight twist of his head for Otto to take the lead. Otto walked just slightly in front of them as they walked down alleys like old friends out for a stroll. They could hear emergency vehicles' sirens coming from all directions converging on the hotel. A walk that only took Otto ten minutes earlier was now taking twice that in order to avoid authorities and surveillance cameras placed along city streets. Being a local to the area, Otto placed himself behind the steering wheel, Spears got in the back seat, and Drex took the front passenger seat. Once everyone was in, Otto wasted little time getting the car moving down the street. As they drove away from the hotel, he changed streets often, checking to be sure they were not being followed. What the hell was that? We lost pretty close to the whole damn team. They just shot each other, Spears said loudly, unable to maintain her professional composer any longer now that they were heading out of the city. Drex, almost as desperate for answers, looked to Otto, but the other man remained silent and focused on the road ahead. Well, how about it there, Bismarck? Got any info for us? Drex asked in a tone that suggested he better like what he heard. Glancing over to Drex, Otto knew just what the tone and remark was meant to convey. He instinctively matched the subtle challenge for dominance with a response delivered in a German accent set in a respectfully firm tone. I am of no relation to the great Otto von Bismarck. Furthermore, I believe you know what took place. You just have not come to grip with the reality of it because it makes you feel vulnerable. You feel that you can be turned into merely a puppet at any moment. Otto's reply told Drex everything he needed to know about the man's character, and with a slight nod, Drex acknowledged his passing of the challenge before moving on. I take it you know what happened before you arrived? Spears sat patiently as she did her best not to interrupt or fidget while the captain now asked the questions. Her mind raced with thoughts of what might have happened before Otto arrived. Yes, I do. Stop me if I'm wrong, but from the synchronicity in which the four in the hallway moved and the four evenly spaced bullet marks on my stomach, it appears the real men in black arrived before my arrival, Otto answered without any doubt in his voice. Men in black? Like the movie? Spears couldn't restrain herself any longer. Otto could tell the lovely lady sitting behind him wanted to ask many questions. Oh no, my dear. These are nothing like the movies. In fact, the movie was created to cover up for their existence. Little is known about them other than they appear from seemingly nowhere and vanish just as fast, usually right before an event such as what you witness today. Most of the time, nobody ever remembers seeing them. Is that why I don't remember seeing them? Spears asked, concerned that she might have lost time and could have done something. Drex decided it was time to regain control over the conversation. No, they knocked on your door, but when you did not answer, they disappeared. That's when Otto here entered the hall. So, they were after you. It seems so, Otto said, still deep in thought when he answered. Who knew you were meeting us there? Drex continued. Seconds went by before Otto replied. That is irrelevant, since neither of us know how many people were truly involved with putting this mission together. Well then, why did they just start shooting each other? Drex asked, still not believing it happened. 
Otto looked straight ahead at the major highway they were about to merge with. Herr Drex, there was nothing you could do. Once they are under control of the men in black, they are either killed, commit suicide, or go crazy. Ever wonder why there are so many murders around the world that end with the person killing themselves before authorities even arrive? Why don't they just come for you directly? Drex asked. From what he'd seen, there was no resisting those sons of bitches. For the first time since they had met, Otto removed his sunglasses and handed them to Drex. Put them on. Drex took the glasses and inspected them closely but couldn't spot anything special about them. Put them on, Otto again requested, only this time with a little stronger tone. Drex did, but still didn't see or feel anything happening. The lenses only seemed to be slightly colored. Are they supposed to do something? The only difference I can tell is that everything has a light green tint to it. That is it. The creatures transmit information by light waves, and my studies have shown that only two colors of lenses alter their abilities. Green, like those in these sunglasses you are now wearing, cancels it out. The other is red, but it is of no help. It simply causes one to go crazy, then typically commit suicide. Otto spoke proudly of his discovery. Removing the glasses, Drex once again looked them over as a question occurred to him. How do you know? 